In the last video, we saw the comparison test for series. And what we would do is we'd look at a series like this that was complicated. We'd set the an to be the expressions that we were talking about, and we would compare it to something easier. In this example, we compared it to a bn that was just going to be a 1 over 2 n squared. That was a series that we knew converged by the p-test, and because the bigger one converged, the bn converges, the smaller one, the an converges as well. The comparison test was pretty nice. But what if I just make it a small little twist? I'm going to instead consider in my second example, same exact thing, except it's now a plus on the top and a minus on the bottom. So let's try to use a comparison test. Well, what we can do, let's maybe establish the an. Okay, that's easy. But now the inequality flips. Now it's not less than the bn that's above, it's greater than that bn that was above. But this doesn't tell me anything at all. I'm at home editing and I just realized that what I'm about to say was completely backwards, so let me try it one more time. If the bn, which is now the smaller series, if that converges, well, that tells me nothing at all about the an, which is bigger than that. If something is bigger than a convergent thing, it may converge or it may diverge. Okay, that was better. So this method of using the comparison test down here just doesn't work. So what can we do? Well, we're going to come up with a new theorem called the limit comparison test. It's going to do a better job for us. Uh, let's consider this series. I still like that an and that bn that I had. So let me still keep them up on the board. It's just that it's not an inequality that works in the right direction between them. So instead of trying to set up an inequality, I'm going to consider the limit of this quotient, the ans over the bns. That is, I'm going to consider the limit as n goes to infinity of where I put the expression for the an on the top and the expression for the bn on the bottom. Now, I can just do a little bit of algebra here. The 1 over n squared on the bottom, I'm going to bring it up to the top. It's going to multiply out. This gives me a limit now of 2n cubed plus 2 on the top and 2n cubed minus n squared on the bottom. How do we do this limit? Well, highest power on the top, highest power on the bottom, they're both the same. They're both n cubed. The smaller order terms don't matter and my limit as n goes to infinity, so it's just a 2n cubed dominating over a 2n cubed. That cancels and I'm just left with 1. So this limit of the quotient of my terms is nothing but 1. Well, what can we do with that? Like, if I have this fact, this limit of this quotient is equal to 1, uh, how is this helpful? Now, if I didn't have the limit sign there, you could pull up the bn and you say an was equal to bn, in which case the two series would be identical. It's not the case that the an is equal to bn, they are different, it's only their quotient in the limit that happens to be equal to 1. But because of this limiting factor, it's enough to think of it as that the an, while not necessarily equal to the bn, the an gets very similar to the bn, and as your n goes to infinity, the an and the bn get closer and closer and closer together. So it seems very reasonable that the sum of the ans and the sum of the bns, well, maybe not converge into the same thing. They either both converge or they both diverge. More formally, we can state the limit comparison test. It looks like this. It says if you've got a series of ans, a series of bns, they both have positive terms and it doesn't need to be equal to one. If the limit of the quotient of those terms is just any positive number, could be two, could be a half, whatever, just needs to be non-zero and it needs to be a finite number, then both series either converge or both series diverge. They have to have the same kind of behavior. Now, let's return to the example that we have. So where were we? We had this sum, we had this an picked out, this bn picked out, and we knew that the quotient of them was nothing but one. Now. Because the bn's are going to converge, that's something that we have by the p-test that we've seen before, the integral of 1 over x squared from 1 to infinity converges, then what the limit comparison test tells us is that since one of them converges and their limit of the quotient is 1, the other one is going to converge as well, and we get this result by the limit comparison test. So I really like the limit comparison test in particular because it now applies in scenarios where the comparison test fails, where you can't come up with some nice easy inequality, where it works in the wrong direction. In many of those scenarios, the limit comparison test can come in and actually solve whether you've got your convergence. So for all of these series with really messy expressions, you just say, look, it behaves very similarly to this one with nice expression. Maybe it's a p-series, maybe it's a geometric series, maybe it's a harmonic series. It's something you know, and you compare it to that, and if the limit is a finite number that's greater than zero, then you have it. 
you have the comparison such that the convergences are going to be the same. They either both converge or they both diverge.